Welcome back, everybody. Today's episode of the 406 Garage is all about the Travelette. Like that one. That one's mine. It's not for sale. Let me show you some more. This is also a Travelette. It is for sale. It's four-wheel drive. It's a three-quarter ton. It's got a V8. It's got power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, and it's an automatic transmission. This is what's left of a Travelette. That's a cab, four doors, and most of the interior. It's a Travelette, but it's just part of a Travelette. This one is sold. It's headed to Austin, Texas. But it's also a Travelette. Okay, this is my Travelette, my personal truck. Um, this has a lot of modifications not from the factory. We put complete 2012 Ford Super Duty axles and suspension underneath this. And this truck is getting a 5.9 liter common rail, Cummins motor, and a six speed manual transmission. It is not in there yet, but it is getting it very soon. This is one of my 2023. This is another Travelette. This is a 1971. This belongs to a customer. It is not for sale. This truck, <clears throat> excuse me, started out as a two wheel drive and it had no engine, no transmission, no nothing. It was just a roller. A customer of ours bought it from us and then had us convert it back to four wheel drive. Why would somebody do that? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you. So, a lot of these trucks, when they were two-wheel drive, were not driven as hard or beat up as much as the four-wheel drive. So if you buy a two-wheel drive and you convert it to four-wheel drive, generally speaking, you start out with a nicer truck. That's what this customer wanted. So this is original paint, original interior, and we put a very low mileage 392 motor. Here, I'll show you guys. Maybe. Hold, please. All right. So we put a low mileage 392 engine in this, international, at about 40,000 miles. We did reseal it, give it a little bit of a touch up. Brand new master cylinder and booster. Brand new power steering pump. Brand new 727 automatic transmission. Brand new 205 transfer case. This truck does have air conditioning, aluminum radiator, power steering cooler, transmission cooler. It has all the bells and whistles. Now, when we did the axles on this truck, what we did was we got a set of Chevrolet axles. Uh, typically, 73 to 87 is a real good um, year group of axles that are relatively easy to find and what that gives you oh, is a Dana 44 front end axle with disc brakes Man, I don't know if you get a better light okay I'm gonna get a light hang on okay back to this high dollar high production video with a light so Dana 44 front axle Completely rebuilt hub to hub. You can see all new ball joints and knuckles and seals and bolts and washers and gaskets and U-bolts, brand new leaf springs, all new hardware, brand new Bilstein shocks, new brake lines, brand new BF Goodrich tires. These are used wheels and used center caps, but sandblasted, powder coated, and then another thing that we do, we put brass valve stems on everything. And the reason we do that, other than the fact that it looks cool, rubber valve stems, especially on vehicles that don't get used very much, weather check and crack and leak. Brass doesn't. Last forever. Well, not forever, like dinosaurs, but a long time. Okay, so that's the Chevy 44 front axle. Now let me go all the way back. 21 feet, that's how long these trucks are. And I'll show you the back axle. Okay, so the rear axle is a Chevy 14 bolt full float rear axle. And it has disc brake 
conversion. So this now has four wheel disc brakes, power brakes, and power steering. Also, brand new Bilstein shocks and brake lines on the back as well. Okay, back to the beginning. Oh my gosh, that light is bright. Why would somebody go to this extent? Well, this gentleman wants to use this truck for his family, camping, hunting, fishing, general outings, and he didn't want a new truck. And quite honestly, he spent a lot less than a new truck. <laughs> and he just wanted it to have the reliability and drivability of a newer, nicer truck, but not new. So we built this for him. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, cause you're gonna ask me, Ben, this is a Travelette. That sounds a lot like a Travel Wall. What is, what is a Travel Wall versus a Travelette and why is there two different names? I'm so glad you asked. Let me show you. Travelette is a crew cab four door pickup. Could be a short bed, can be a long bed, but Travelette has to do with four doors and that cab. Travel all, all the travel. No, that's, that's not what it is. Travel all is this here, which is a wagon. Looks really similar to that Chevrolet thing that they used to make. And funny thing, International has been making it as long, if not longer. I think as long. But as far as the square body travel all, 1969 was the first year. Square body Chevrolet version, first year, 1973. So back when, you know, Detroit and everybody was sharing ideas, stealing ideas, whatever. You know how that goes. Okay, so travel all wagon. Travel at pickup. Make sense? Good. Okay, before I mentioned, this one is one we just got and it's for sale. That one is sold and gone. Both are travelettes, not travel all. This travelette, like I said earlier, three quarter ton, four wheel drive, long bed, automatic, power steering, power brake, AC, and deluxe interior. What's deluxe interior? Well, let me show you. So glad you guys are asking all these questions. You're making the video so much easier. Deluxe interior is the vinyl door panels and armrests and everything all kind of dolled up right there. Normally that's just a metal door panel. And I'll show you in just a minute. So again, dolled up interior, nicer door panels, full headliner and interior. And this truck, as you can see on the dash right there, 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 and all the way down over there, air conditioning. Air conditioning vents for AC. So this had all the bells and whistles. Fancy steering wheel, all the stuff. In 1973, this was the Cadillac of crew cab pickups. No joke. Now you say the bed doesn't match. I know, I was getting to that. You guys are so fast. Okay, so this had a flatbed on it at one time. The previous owner sold the flatbed, and when he went to sell us this truck, he went and sourced another bed that matches, just not the color. So, we have the bed, all of the trim, the bumper, the tailgate, and all the parts and pieces. There's also an extra hood and door for this, because the hood has a couple of rust spots, like surface rust pinhole, and so does the door. Um, now, I told you guys I'd show you what a metal door panel looked like, base model. That is what a metal door panel looks like. So this is a non-deluxe interior. Lucy, where are you going? What, what are you doing? She's trying to be a model. Actually, what she wants is to go for a ride. So, metal door panel, base interior. Come on. Now this, deluxe interior okay you guys see the difference there's an insert panel here has all this really cool textured sewn fancy high dollar not high dollar i'm just kidding interior so that was what the, the difference between the deluxe and the standard interior is again cab 
sold, not for sale. Truck complete, for sale. My truck, not for sale. Is this confusing enough for you guys? <laughs> and this, the travel all. This one is also for sale. It's on our website, 406garage.com. It could be yours as well. And this is not a shameless plug for sale video. Sorry, I'm just trying to do a travel at versus travel all video for everyone that asks, what is the difference? So hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. Give you guys a little pano here. These trucks are all available can be adopted into your house. Any of you guys that are wanting one. We have several. They mostly all run and drive too. Okay, so do you know the difference now? If you do, comment below. What is a travel all and what is a travelette? What's the difference? Now, I wish that I had all the answers for you guys to say why international. Oh! That just tried to kill me. Did you guys see, it tried to kill me. Wow, you gotta be careful out here, I almost died. Lucy, why weren't you protecting me? All right, comment down below if you know the difference between a travel all and a travelette. What's the major difference? I know I do. I wish I knew why International named them what they named them. And someday maybe I'll look it up or if you guys Google it, find out. John Glancy would know, um, Jeff Ismail knows, a bunch of those really, really smart international guys would know. Uh, Levi at Old Iron Off Road, I bet he knows. Mike Moore, I bet he knows. Anyway, I'm just name dropping now because there's all these smart people that are smarter than me. That's who I learned from. So this truck, my truck, the reason I brought this out front and put it right in front of the shop so every day now that I walk by it is to remind me that I need to finish it. It's on my list of things to do. 2023, finish it. I've owned this truck for 10 years. I bought it in 2013. And you would never believe that when I bought this, it had no front axle, no rear axle, no engine, no transmission, no hood, no grill, no marker lights, which it still doesn't have marker lights, but it did have a title. And it's original paint, original interior. Other than the dash piece, here I'll show you. Because I know you're wondering. This has deluxe interior. Know how you can tell? Right there. No, stay out. This also has carpet and the nicer seats really nice headliner and sun visors a whole bunch of parts and pieces needs a good cleaning but not bad for original paint original interior does have this black dash piece here i actually confession i put it in there because the one that was in here was junk so i just put that in there and this dash mat is just kind of sitting there now if i remember right oof, uh, uh, yeah. this does not have hey get out 53,000, can you guys see that? 53,204 original miles. And if you look at the gas pedal and the brake pedal, yep, I would 100% agree that that is original miles. Now, I also happen to know a lot more about this truck because I got the information from the son of the original owner. So his dad bought it back in the day. I think I've told this story before about this truck, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. But since the wind's blowing and it's cold outside, I'm gonna come inside here in the shop and tell you right here. So, what is the story of my original truck? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. I'm gonna sit in this one and tell you. This truck's headed to Pennsylvania, by the way. A very good customer of ours and a very good patient person knowing that this takes a long time and he has been very gracious and very grateful so thank you your truck is coming home soon my truck 1970 oh man now it's going to question me i believe it's a 73 i'd have to look at the title i bought that truck 
locally here. And it's a funny story because I was driving down the road out towards the east and my sons and I were just going for a drive and headed out, just kind of picking and looking, going to lunch, whatever. Drive by this old farm and kind of poking out of the garage or barn kind of lean to was a back end of a travel all. Now remember, we just talked about it. Travel all, it's the wagon. Travelette is the pickup. So we drive by and we see it. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a travel all, you guys. Let's go knock on the door. So we drove back up to the to the farmhouse and we knocked on the door and this nice man who was about the same age as me answered the door and I asked him, hey, well, what are you guys doing with that old travel all? And he said, well, it belongs to my dad. His health is kind of failing. That's why we're all here kind of helping him out, take care of him and organizing the farm and kind of, you know, getting things in order. I was like, okay. I said, well, if you guys ever decide to sell it, you know, here's my name and number and please call me and I'd be very interested in, in purchasing it. And uh, we left. Well, fast forward about 18 months and I get a phone call from that guy and he says, Hey, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, you met me like a year and a half ago and talked to me about my dad's travel all. And uh, I live out, you know, east of town and da, 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 you came by with your sons. I said, yeah, I absolutely remember you. And he said, well, not too many months after I saw you, my dad um, passed away. And so we've been kind of trying to organize and settle the estate and uh, we're going to sell the farm. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, whatever. I said, I appreciate you calling. He said, well, if you're still interested in the travel all, we'd like to sell it to you. So why don't you come out, bring a truck and trailer and we'll discuss it and we'll make you a deal. And I was like, great. When do you want me to come out? And we set up a time and he said, but there's one caveat. I was like, oh, okay. He said, my dad had a whole bunch of parts and pieces and things for the travel all and they all go with it. And as you know, we're trying to clean up the farm and get it ready to sell. So everything goes with it and it's an all or nothing deal. So if you're okay with that, uh, come on out. If you don't want to take all the other stuff, then we'll just advertise it locally or whatever. I was like, hey, no problem. Happy to take everything. So we go out to look at the travel all and uh, get there, talk to him, hear the story of it and everything else. It's just super cool. And uh, he goes, all right, well, let me show you the rest of the parts that go with the truck. So he says, back in the 80s, uh, mom and dad used to go up to Alaska in the summertime and then they would go down to the desert in the wintertime. They would take a about a month-long trip to Alaska, and they would camp and fish and go crabbing, and then they'd come back. And then, you know, when the weather started getting kind of crappy around here, they'd go down to Arizona and hang out for the winter and then come back in the spring. I was like, oh, okay. And he said, so one year, back in the 80s, like 82, I think is what he said, 81, 82. Travel all was a 74, so it was only about 10 years old. They were on their way up the Alaskan ha Highway, the Alcan as it's called, the Alaskan Canadian Highway, and uh, blew the engine up, just grenaded it. And her, his dad, he said his dad was so mad because that truck was his favorite truck and he was not going to give up on it. So he had it towed all the way back down to Oregon. Can't even imagine what that costs. And he parked it and he was very frustrated and he shoved it in the barn. And that winter they went to Arizona. When they went to Arizona to hang out and be warm and everything else, they went into town one day and they went to a car lot. They drove by a car lot in downtown Mesa, Arizona. And this truck was sitting there. Now this truck was two wheel drive, automatic, power steering, power brake, AC but two wheel drive. His dad said, you know, this was the eighties. He's like, I'll just buy the whole truck, drive it home, yard out all the stuff that's mechanical on it. Cause it's got low miles, shove it in the travel all. She'll be good to go. That's what they did. So if you can imagine back in the eighties, things were a lot cheaper and to buy a whole truck that runs and drives and drive it all the way back to Oregon made sense in his mind. So that's what he did. He drove it all the way home. He pulled the motor and transmission out and it only had, as I just showed you guys earlier in the video, 50,000 miles, low miles. He pulled the motor and tranny out and he put that engine and transmission in the travel all and it lived on for another 30 years, 40 years. Well, at least 40 because when I went to go 
purchased it in 2013, it was still running and driving. So uh, whatever that math is, 93, 2003, 2013. Sure, no, 30, 40, I don't know. You guys do the calculations. Anyway, so after he pulled the motor and transmission out, he shoved it in the barn and he had taken the hood off and the grill in the front to pull the motor and transmission out, set that stuff aside in the, uh, in the barn. I thought Lucy was jumping up on the truck. No, she's just staring at me like, why are you sitting in a truck? And if you're sitting in a truck, why am I not sitting in there with you? Anyway, shove the truck in the barn. Putting the grills off, motor and transmission is out. Um, at some point, I don't know what, he wasn't sure, uh, he sold the axles. So the front was just an I-beam with brakes. I don't know what, maybe made a trailer out of it. I don't know. But the rear axle he sold to one of the farmers who blew up his rear axle. So fast forward to the 90s, somewhere in there, scrap metal prices were pretty good. Teenage kids, meaning the guy that I got the truck from back when he was a teenager, they went in the barn and scavenged around the farm and got a bunch of scrap metal together, threw it in the pickup, went to the scrapyard, got some cash, and they went and bought some beer. So now you're going to ask, how in the heck, Ben, does that hood match the patina, wear, paint, scratches, and everything perfectly to the truck? No, I didn't find it in the junkyard. But I did find it on another rig, and that is a funny story. I'll try and tell it really quick because I feel like this video is getting really long. Okay. 2016? So, it's like, I've, I've owned the truck. At this point, I've had this and the travel all for three or four years. And we're down in Southern Oregon at a soccer tournament for my son. And anytime we go out of town for soccer or football, baseball, whatever, a lot of times I take the car trailer because you know what? Craigslist, marketplace. It happens. Stuff comes home. I mean, it just, it does. It's what happens. So we're down at a soccer tournament in Southern Oregon and um, on, I can't remember if it was marketplace or Craigslist, probably Craigslist back then. There's an advertisement for two travel alls and a whole bunch of D-series truck parts in Southern Oregon. So we get done with the tournament first day. I take the truck and trailer and the boys, we run over to this guy's farm and there's two travel alls and a cab and a bunch of other stuff. And I look it all over. One of the travel alls is just rusty and it's really not worth taking. So I pass on that, but there's this yellow travel all 72 and uh, it's in decent shape and it's complete and has a, has a rebuilt motor. Maybe it came with a rebuilt motor. I don't remember. And then there was a D-Series cab. Long story short, I bought the whole lot, loaded it up. We went to the soccer tournament on Sunday, and then we came home. We came home, and I promptly took the hood, unbolted it from the truck, and said, there is no way that that matches that good. And I bolted it on this truck. And if you didn't know the story, you would agree with me that that hood came on this truck. It didn't, absolutely did not, but it is a dead match. Southern Oregon has a high desert area, the weather, the patina, everything. It was within one year of this truck. It is the same color and it had the same fade. And at that point I was like, okay, now I don't have to put on some other hood and paint it. I've got a right hood. That's when I started working on this truck. Until that point, I had never touched this truck because I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So we go into the barn and Here's that truck, the two wheel drive travelette long bed, no hood, no grill, no nothing on the front, no engine, no transmission, no axles, no wheels, no tires, sitting on four firewood logs, round logs, literally just sitting on stumps. And the guy says, there's your parts. And I said, well, that's a truck. He said, yeah, those are the spare parts. And then he proceeded to tell me the story of how his dad robbed the motor and transmission and everything else out of it. I was like, okay. He goes, so that goes with it. I'm like, well, I don't even know how I'm going to haul that. It doesn't have any axles or anything. He's like, not my problem. If you want the travel all, the truck goes with it. I have titles, paperwork, and everything for the whole lot. It's all or nothing. I shake the man's hand. We make a deal. We take the travel all home. And we go back another day. I took an axle with us. I took some U-bolts. Um, thankfully, those trucks are leaf sprung in the front. So 
We just put an axle and some old tires on the rear, bolted it up, and then hooked the chains to the front leaf springs and just drug it right up like skis on the trailer. Just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I do that right? Okay. And we brought it home. So that is the story of how that truck got here. And it has been with me for 10 years. And the fact that I found a hood that darn near dead matches and no one would believe that it didn't come with it makes me just that much more excited to build it. So that year that I got the hood, the very next year we got with a local fab shop and we got all the suspension and axles from the 2012 Super Duty put underneath it, got it up into a roller, and then life happened for a couple years. The business started getting really busy and I haven't worked on it. And so this year on my goal board, top of the list is finish my travelette. Okay, so it's sort of fitting. I'll close out this video in my travelette, my crew cab, my truck that I need to finish. So hopefully this video was informative for you guys to understand the difference between a travelette and a travel wall. Comment down below if you understand. Comment down, down below also if you have a travelette or you have a travel all, I'd love to hear about it. These are my favorite. The travel walls and travelettes are my favorite. We do a lot of scouts too, but really my heart is definitely in the crew cab pickups and travel alls. So if any of you guys out there have a travel all or a travelette or some scouts or anything that you want to get rid of, give us a call. Uh, give us an email. Go to the website, 406garage.com. 406garagesales at gmail.com. You can email us. Uh, you can comment down below. You can go to the website and call us on the phone. Whatever. We'd love to come rescue a travel all or travelette from one of you guys. That would be super, super fun. So hopefully you understand uh, all of this and it makes sense and it was somewhat entertaining. I took a few cues from my buddy Casey on jumping around in different trucks, gave you guys a few different views and, uh, just try to make it a little more fun, you know? And if any of you guys want the red and gray travelette, send us a message. It's for sale. We're going to finish it up, make it a runner driver, and it can go to your house and you can make it your personal camping, fishing, family, hunting vehicle. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you on the next one. So that's what I'm going to do. And you guys get to hold me accountable. <laughs>